This is the scapula. There are several structures on the scapula. Many of the structures that come on the scapula come in threes. For instance, there are three processes. The coracoid process, which is the cylindrical process sticking out here. The acromion process, which is the flat process here. And the spinous process, or the spine of the scapula, which is here. There are three borders or margins on the scapula. The curved margin right here is the vertebral margin because it actually is closer to the vertebrae. This margin here on the inner area uh, is actually the axillary margin because it is closer to the armpit. Now the vertebral margin and the axillary margin both have alternate names. The vertebral margin is also known as the medial margin and the axillary margin is also known as the lateral margin. The margin at the top right here, and I'll turn it so you can see it better, this margin right here is considered the superior margin. Now the margins when they come together they form angles. When two lines come together, they actually form an angle. In this case, you have a superior margin merging with that of the medial margin or the vertebral margin. So this area right here is the superior margin. Down here, we have the medial margin or vertebral margin merging with that of the lateral margin or the axillary margin, and it's forming an angle right here. This would be the inferior angle. Over here, we have several structures that we would have to identify before we mark the angle. First, we have this depression right here, uh, which would be the glenoid cavity. This is the depression in which the head of the humerus fits inside of the scapula. Below the glenoid cavity, is a process sticking out here. This process here is the infraglenoid tubercle. And the infraglenoid tubercle is actually part of the lateral margin. Now, if we follow the lateral margin upwards and we go past the infraglenoid tubercle, you'll see that it runs into the glenoid cavity. And remember, two lines, when they merge together, they form an angle. So right here, at this point right here, just above the infraglenoid tubercle, would be where the lateral angle would be, right here. Now there are three depressions called fossas on the scapula. Two of them associated with the spinous process, one above and one below. The one above is called the supraspinous fossa. The one below is called the infraspinous fossa. There is also depression on the underside of the scapula, right here, and this would be the subscapular fossa. Now, there is one more structure to talk about, and that is this depression right here, and that is called the suprascapular notch, right there, the suprascapular notch. Now, if we were to then look at the scapula, combined with the clavicle and the humerus, we can now see that we have structures that are forming the joint capsule. Here, we actually have two bones being joined together by connective tissue. This would be a ligament. Here, we have a muscle being attached to the bone. In this case, this white material here is actually a tendon, because when you have muscle attached to bone, it's a tendon. When you stretch or tear a ligament, it is called a sprain, S-P-R-A-I-N. When you stretch or tear a muscle or a tendon, it is called a strain, S-T-R-A-I-N. These green structures that you see on this particular model here are actually sacs of synovial fluid called bursa. When bursa are squeezed, they, they're like sponges. When you squeeze a sponge, the fluid that's held by the sponge is released. 
When these bursa are squeezed, they release synovial fluid into the joint capsule and around the surrounding muscles. This allows for some lubrication to allow the muscles to freely move amongst themselves. Okay.